And in some people, it stays there. It's making 10 times more insulin at any moment, the beta yeah. cells. And then in some instances, it comes down, but it never bottoms out, not in type 2. That does not happen yeah. in type 2 diabetes. But suffice it to say, if we combine all of these variables, the insulin resistance at the glucose uh, managing tissues and uh, tendency to produce less insulin, now we have the glucose starting to change and potentially changing quite rapidly. And then it's only at that point within this glucose-centric paradigm that conventional clinical care will detect the problem. And now the clinical uh, uh, focus will include a conversation about uh, well, we got to control your your diabetes. We got to control your blood sugar levels. But even still, Dom, as much as the focus will have now included a metabolic component to it, conventional training wouldn't have shown um, what is so obvious to many of us. That is that this patient's preceding health problems, the hypertension, maybe the migraine headaches, maybe the infertility are all to varying degrees impacted, if not directly caused, by this insulin resistance that has been lingering in the background for the for potentially decades, you know, before the glucose ever starts to climb. But I'm, I was just like super engaged by your, the presentation of the chronological, what you just really nicely explained. Is there human data? My colleague, uh, Dr. Barbara Hansen, uh, who's worked along with like uh, Gerald Schulman and, and others, like really... Uh, one of the leaders in, in understanding like insulin physiology. I adopted and adapted it from a publication from a, you might've met him um, and I bet people have heard of him. Uh, he's a pediatric endocrinologist and, and his name was Jake. His name is Jake Kushner. I'll try to find oh, yeah, that yeah. manuscript uh -huh. so that we yeah. can include. So he yeah. had put together a figure one time in one of his review articles that he published a few years ago, and it showed that paradigm. And that's mm -hmm. why I felt so confident, especially, Dom, especially on the um, the, the early part of it, I, I don't think would be controversial at all, that, that insulin's climbing before the glucose starts to climb. And then yeah. it was this idea that even if the insulin starts to come down, in type 2 diabetes, it does not go to zero. There's an age-dependent decrease in, in insulin, you know, associated mm -hmm. with type 2 diabetes, which could, could lead to like uh, insulin-dependent type 2 diabetes. But it's, yep. but it's, yep. you know, that you may have not kind of captured, maybe it's more like early age and middle age, but, you know, in advanced age, uh, I think in non-human primates, it, it, it'll, insulin starts to tank later on. That's yeah. a, it could be a consequence of just you know, what, what you've been talking about, which is another consequence of insulin resistance is just, you know, beta cell burnout. I'd say it was about in the 60s, um, it, within that the decade of, of people being in their 60s. But interestingly, mm -hmm. even then, when beta cell number starts to go down, there are human studies to show that with dietary intervention, but they found in type 2 diabetics, even as beta cell mass starts to go down, which I would say is not a bad thing. After all, beta cell mass expanded significantly during this these decades of hyperinsulinemia. I actually do not consider that to be the problem that many do. If anything, it's putting them back closer to where they used to be. And I think there's an opportunity there because in conventional clinical care, you know, insulin's been coming up, they're insulin resistant, insulin may start to go down, and then the glucose levels start to go up. Um, because the the conventional model is only looking at the glucose, um, that view then justifies pushing the insulin up even higher and giving the type 2 diabetic insulin therapy. That that uh, increases the descent. They will start to gain weight much more rapidly. Their metabolic rate slows significantly. It's something that people don't appreciate. That insulin slows metabolic rate, and that, of course, amplifies weight gain, and they become more and more insulin resistant. With all of that insulin, which is so pathogenic, they're three times more likely to die from heart disease.